Hey everybody, welcome to Obscurities and Miniatures, and today we've got Crexia on Oriniax from Raging Heroes. And I am joined today by other members of the Blood Tribe who are actually painted and will be hanging out with us to see what their new leader looks like in the flesh. We've got the usual how to take care of your resin. If you never build a resin model, you probably want to read that. I'm not going to waste a lot of time talking about that, though. Let us behold what we've got a hold of today. A lot of stuff in there. Yippee. So, first thing, I want to see what size base we've got. It looks to be a 50 millimeter round one. Yep. Bunch of holes on the bottom. Take a look at the parts. So we have two big sprues. This looks to be all of the extra bits in our rider. First thing I can say is that our rider looks a little bit better cast than the actual Blood Tribe models that we've seen so far. I only say that because I've dealt with them. I feel like this is a lot crisper. Mm, the fur, I'm not a big fan of the fur on the feet. Just my own personal preference, I guess. Tail. And she seems to be wearing a new type of skull, not unlike some of the other masked Blood Tribe Furion girls. Then we have the Oriniax itself. Fairly chunky, fairly large. Grabbing a Chaos Knight of Old. It is quite a bit taller, so if you were using this for Marauders, for example, I don't know if that's going to be the best choice. A lot of casting gates we're going to have to clean up there. Overall, the quality looks really nice. Uh, I'm wondering now what I thought that was. That was a tail. This thing. You know what? This might be part of its crazy antlers because I'm looking in the baggie here. And there's another one of those crazy things, and also our Oriniax already has a tail. So, a bunch of antlers we're going to have to attach there, it looks like. That's okay. And then we have a nice tactical rock to place woo, on the base. <laughs> it's too smooth. I can't even pick it up. Like so. So, I'm going to probably figure out where that goes. I'm not going to glue that down to the base yet, but we are definitely going to get that all put together and we'll see how it compares and we'll see if I can grab some other actual painted cavalry models and we'll give it a look-see, shall we? And we have Crexia, Crexia the Black here, all finished on her, what was it called again, the Oriniax? So, this thing is on a 50 millimeter base and I really don't like it. How it fits. First of all, it's not glued down, so no harm there. But it barely fits on there, and you have to have the whole tactical rock going on. Whereas I think, and I'm just gonna grab my Varengard guy here. If we took her and her base, oh, what do you know? They conveniently fit on a regular large heavy cavalry base. Let's take a close look at the model. So one thing I noticed, I don't know if I mentioned this earlier, but there's actually an indentation for where exactly that hoof on the front leg is supposed to go. So that's nice and convenient. And then there is the Orinix itself. So I'm not sure if I got the horns on correctly. They don't look like they're very straight, but they're so crazy big and protruding. I mean, I get that they wanted to do something different with the model. I think it's just a little bit overdone. Like, if they trimmed it off here, I mean, there's nothing stopping me from doing it myself, but I'm weird like that, and I don't like damaging big, expensive, fancy models. But I figure if the horns were just a tad smaller, it might be a little bit more reasonable. Otherwise, when I first originally saw it, I thought it would look kind of plain and undetailed, but I'm, the more I look at it and the more I've messed with it, the more I feel better about how it actually has all worked out in the flesh. Yeah, I really don't know if I got those horns on right. But the overall detail is pretty nice. I just noticed it's got another little fur lining on its saddle. I'm not sure what these things are down here because it doesn't actually attach to the saddle. And the saddle was already glued on, or molded on, I should say, along with the tail and these weird 
bony bar things. Don't know what they're all about. And then we have Crexia herself, who looks absolutely like she would fit in perfectly with our other blood drive ladies. You can see here, very similar designs in her armor, her clothing, her mask, her weapons. Very similar, but not the same. So don't get your hopes up if you just wanted a mounted version of her. And I don't think her name's correct yet anyway. Thankfully, she sits very easily on her mount without having to worry about, you know, taking her on or off. Once I start painting, she's going to remain off until the very last moment. And she's obviously a good size rider. She's not as big as a Varengard, but then again, you know, not many other riders should be. But she still puts up a good profile, I guess you could say, on the table. So happy about that. Looking forward to getting her painted, and hopefully we'll see some rules for her in some kind of GW game. But I, I figure, you know, I got the whole unit of these ladies all painted up at this point. We'll find some use for them. So with that said, this is High Lord Tamberly with Obscurities and Miniatures, and I'd just like to say thanks again for watching, and hopefully you guys found this useful and informative in case you were curious what the actual model looked like, and hopefully you'll stick around for more because we got plenty more videos where that came from. See you all later. Bye-bye.